Bet House member video and is a part of the ongoing Force for Good class series. To learn more about this ongoing series, please visit TibetHouse.us. Well, you could, there's two armed cow chakra and so on, but, but no, you have to do the whole thing. And the, you wouldn't want to, I mean, people don't want the Kala Chakra unless they're ready to do the whole thing. There are simplified other deities where there's only two arms, you know, and, uh, and you know, where there's a more humanoid type of body, normal type of body. They don't need that complicated thing unless they're getting it, unless they somehow feel that's necessary for them. And, uh, you know, there's a huge, you could say like, um, you know, is there a simplified form of this or that complex medicine? Yes, there are simpler medicines, but then there are some really complicated ones for some complicated conditions. You know. But the, basically, the human being is a really complicated thing. Human being is very complex. The brain, the nervous system is really complicated. And um, you know, the, the, the tantric mandala is, fits the complexity of the ordinary with the extraordinary in order to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. In the creation stage, what you're doing is creating an extraordinary world, the best of all possible, a model for the best of all possible worlds. Because when you become a Buddha, you're creating the best of all possible worlds. Contra, Voltaire, you're creating the best of all possible worlds for everybody, right? Which would be, imagine if you could shape the world where you wouldn't have to sit in a concrete room like this and people sort of think of things through words and show some pictures and do that and the other. But somehow, the environment itself, the chair they sat in, you know, it was like multimedia. And the pillar turned into Kala Chakra right in front of their eyes, you know, because the whole thing could, like, speak to them in a certain way. You know, that would really be something, you know. And um, actually, the medicine Buddha thing, for example, there's only just a two-arm Buddha. And you can, if you want to be a doctor, you visualize yourself as medicine Buddha. And you're blue, you know, and you have this plant in it, you know. And then you visualize that your world becomes this world of healing plants. And you shape all the things that grow in the world to be communicating with the humans and to feed them and to be there to, to adapt them and to help them, and et cetera, just produce just the leaf they need. And this and that, of course, they have to know how to, which one this which per person needs. So you teach that in the form of an elaborate manual and a text, as the Medicine Buddha does. That's a really marvelous idea, that you go to medical school. Medical school is an initiation. It would be as if in our medical schools, the first thing you did was you met Hippocrates. And then the Hippocratic Oath was where you started. And you met and you visualized, or you visualized Asclepius, the Greek god of healing. And you had a yoga of becoming Asclepius and reading everybody's dreams and minds to know what was wrong with them to get the diagnosis from them, from their unconscious mind. You became like a human CAT scan. You didn't need all this expensive machinery. You just projected your mind to where you could just read every fiber in their body. That would be really cool. So there are different things for different persons. Yes, please. But I, you know, you talk in this. No, no. You want to ask another question, please? It's just I'm, the way you speak. You know, you, you're because you're speaking very thoughtfully. So you're sort of syncopated in the way you pronounce. So I can't quite figure out what you said. Um, that's all. It just it reminds me of what you mentioned just now about medicine Buddha. It reminds me of uh, how in the Chinese traditions where which tradition have, um, Chinese Chinese uh, pure lamp the uh, yellow practice. emperor you mean um, my my mom is my mom is uh, belongs to the pure land uh, practice and they and there's a lot of visualizations about Amitabha and sometimes medicine Buddha as well. So well in Chinese tradition you have Yao Shufo. But you have medicine Buddha. Yes, in yeah, yeah. Yao Shu Fu. And so, so that, would you say that's like proto-tantric -tan practice in some stuff? Like the, what? Those are the earlier forms of tantric vis visualizations because they imagine, actually visualize the, the pure light itself. Oh, yeah. And Taoism, great Taoism has a lot of tantric stuff. There's Taoist Tantra, sure. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm asking about the Chinese pure land Buddhist practices where... But somehow China seemed to need something from India. I know they're very Zhonghuo. <laughs> center of the world. But somehow, Confucius couldn't manage his local rulers. Although, you know, from the Tibetan legendary point of view, and probably my Indian, 
Manjushri, Bodhisattva of Wisdom, his incarnation was Confucius, actually. Wow. They have such a legend. Confucius felt sorry for Chinese people because they had a big culture even then, but although they had too many floods, actually. But they had a big culture. And then, and then uh, Buddha didn't go there. Buddha chose to be born on the other side of the Tibetan massif, you know, Himalaya, the roof of the world, and Nepal, and, Tibet, and India. And so he felt sorry, so he went and incarnated as Confucius. But if you know the history, the Duke of Lu and uh, the Zhou Empire, which was only nominal at that time, and then Qin and Chu and all the states, they didn't pay attention to Confucius. They didn't listen to him. He didn't have tenure. He didn't get a job. And then the Qin Emperor eventually burned all his books, yeah. totally destroyed. And somehow they reconstructed Confucius. But otherwise, he destroyed all of the Confucian literature. Mengzi, Zhongzi, uh, Confucius, they destroyed all of it. Yeah, those, that those legalist guy, you know, the nasty Mao-like guy, yeah. he destroyed the previous culture because he didn't like the liberal aspect of Confucius. So somehow, in Han Dynasty, later Han Dynasty, they felt they needed B Buddha. Uh, that Indian import, who needs that stuff? They're all chaotic over there in India. They don't have a good economy. And they didn't have the, the communists never controlled India. I don't know why we need that from India, but they did. They did. Even some of the, they developed a nice legend that Lao Tzu was Buddha. Lao Tzu went across the pass, and to, to, so, across the bed, and went to India, and then he became Buddha. He, he uh, left, that's good. That's a nice way of including and overcoming that nationalist ego idea, like, we're the Chinese, you know, like, we're the Indians, we're the Americans. We all have to overcome all of that now, right? Don't you agree? I think so. Buddhism helps with that, too. It helps that kind of identity thing, national identity thing. Zhong Guo, you know? The real Zhong Guo is the Kala Chakra Mandala Palace. Yes, hi. generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, please visit Tibet House U.S., including invites to special trips to study Buddhism up close and personal with Robert Thurman during his annual geographic expedition trips. Trips in 2018 include Mongolia and Bhutan. To learn more, visit BobThurman.com.